Hi, welcome to Exchange Student in Fiberland. My name is Mary Gale and I am your host. Today is November 3rd or 2nd. I think it's the 3rd. It's um, Thursday, so whatever day 3rd or whatever day Thursday is in November, close to the 3rd or 4th. That's what today is. And um, it's been a really long time since I've had a chance to podcast, so um, I hope you still remember who I am, and um, I have been feeling a little overwhelmed, like I really want a podcast and I hadn't had the chance, and now that I do have the chance, I have so much to show you and so much to talk to about that it's overwhelming, and um, so I'm not going to follow any format, and I didn't make any notes, and I'm just going to talk and we'll see how it goes. Um, I guess there's a reason that I won the Hot Mess Award for the Podcaster Challenge, because I'm a hot mess. (laughs) But uh, I feel like I should start all over like um, Liz did from Needlebound, like this should be season two or something, because it's um, been so long. And a lot of things have changed in my life, and now they've (laughs) come full full circle. Um, Those of you who follow me on Ravelry, will know that I got a teaching job. Yay! And those of you that have followed me on Plurk will know that I do not have a teaching job anymore. (laughs) Boo. Um, It's a really long story, and I know you're not here to hear it, but if you want to PM me, then I would be happy to explain um, the school I was at was uh, the politically correct way of saying it could be we didn't have the same educational goals for the children. <laughs> um, it was a little crazy. Anyway, back to knitting. Um, as I said, I did win the Hot Mess Award for the Podcaster Challenge, and um, I wanted to share some of my prizes. Uh, not only the Hot Mess, but the Suffering Through It Award. I got two! Woo! Um, thank you so much for voting for me. I appreciate it. Uh, it made my day. I was having a rough month, as you could infer from what I just said. So um, even though I didn't get a chance to come on and thank you all, I really do appreciate it. And um, Lois, thank you so much for all of the hard work that you put in. So now, show and tell time. Here's what I got. For the um, Suffering Through It Award. Ta-da! Um, Beverly Love hand spun this beauty for me. Um, Superwash Merino, 258 yards, two ply, beautiful. I don't know if I can get all of it in there for you. That was the suffering through it. And I also have a um, free pattern from Apple Blossom and More, which has some really cute cardigans for little girls, which I don't have anybody to knit for. Maybe I could get one that would fit Kira. And she has socks, of course, which you know I love. And then the Hot Mess Prize. Gail from Alpaca and You. Oh my gosh. This is... um, Sport weight, spun by Stromba Farms in Wampum, Pennsylvania, 100% pure alpaca, and it is so soft. Sometimes I just take it out and squeeze it and pet it. Mm, I love it. It's Oh, I cannot tell you how soft it is. If you have not um, had a chance to pet some alpa- alpaca yarn, you need to get yourself some and just love it. And also another pattern from Apple Blossom and more. Here's her card. I can't see very well because my screen is really dirty because I'm gross. Um, Then in my lovely podcaster challenge goodie bag, I have a mini spindle. Now, I think, let's see if it says, a mini supported spindle. I'm so excited about this. I have to research. I have no idea how to use it. Um, But I have one, 
and I can play with it. So um, this is from Spinnerosity, where your spinning curiosity is met. She has an Etsy shop. And then the, um, the sample fiber is from Bartlett Farms. 100% wool round woving. Roving, roving, roving. And um, got some goodies from Wolf Farm. I've got her, um, where is it? There it is. Um, soap. Oh, can't remember the flavor, <laughs> the scent. Let's see. Sunflower. <laughs> Along with a coupon. And some very delicate needles. And from Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. Some beautiful pink um, stitch markers. Aren't those pretty? Match my sweater. And also match my socks, which I will show you in a minute. Um, I also have a little mini skein from Miss Babs, and I was playing with it today. <laughs> I haven't used it yet or anything, but I was touching it and looking at it and I set it somewhere and I have no idea where I set it. So I can't show you, but if I find it, um, I'll be happy or when I find it, if I don't use it or maybe when I'm using it, I'll show you. And I also have this bag from, um, Knitting's My Bag, which is perfect. I love the colors. Let me get, um, that out. Sorry. Oh, that's so cute. There we go. Um, I had so much fun. I know that I kind of complained, and I'm. Um, I didn't mean to be a complainer. I was just being honest. I wasn't excited about the pattern, uh, but with Pattern Whispers' help, it really turned out fun and nice. And um, I don't feel like I, I deserve the Suffered Through It Award, but I'm really glad I won. <laughs> um, well, on um, other show-and-tell news, the um, dish rag tag, I don't remember when it started and when it ended, but it was since the last time that I talked to you. Um, we, uh, what you do is you get, like they sent a box with uh, yarn in it and a pattern and a little goodie and um, you're on it like a relay race a team and the, the box the same exact box travels um, from person to person and as soon as you get your box you knit up the pattern and you put the dish rag in the box and another um, skein of yarn and the dish rag is for the next person and the skein of yarn is to knit up the pattern and I don't have mine with me because it's in the washing machine. <laughs> um, but I do have my prize. Our team... <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Hot mess, hot mess. Um, <laughs> our team won um, first place. Dish rag tag five. And my little ribbon or metal. Uh, first place prize got to pick the color. So we got blue or purple. And um, that was really fun and um, not a, not too much commitment because you really, it only takes a day once you get it, knit it up, send it off. And it was a lot of fun to be able to track it. And um, the box that w it was in was really cute. We put it, um, little notes on it and Kira put some little Hello Kitty stamps on it saying good luck to the next person. I was the next to the last person to have it so um, yeah it was a lot of fun. I highly recommend it and I will do my best to link that in uh, my show notes so that you could maybe participate next time. It was fun. And um, 
the last thing that I've been participating in, uh, well, there's actually two, but one I was a big fail, so it doesn't really count. But um, Sock Sniper, I got in three kills. That means that um, I finished a pair of socks and I sent it off, and then she sent me the socks that were partway finished, and I um, finished those and sent them off. Same thing, finished those, sent them off. Just yesterday, I was killed. There were four of us. I was uh, fourth place, I guess you would call it. Um, mainly because the um, of the mailing system, post office, boo. I um, the the girl that sent me the socks to be knit, like my I'm gonna call it my weapon. The socks that I needed to finish off. They um, they sat in the post office over the weekend instead of coming to me and if I would have had one day I'm pretty sure I would have had four kills and I wouldn't have won the whole thing but I would have been um, tied for um, having the most kills which is pretty good I would think considering all the stress I was under I, I, I'm amazed how um, long I stayed in it but um, yeah my bullet and my weapon came in the mailbox at the exact same time, exact same day. So I um, got to open my goodie bag and I got my beautiful socks, which I'm wearing and I didn't think I had to take them off. So hold on a second. Probably dirty as usual. Doop -doo -doo. There you go. I can't remember the name of the pattern. I'm so sorry. Um, but I will look it up. There are, I think there are six patterns in Sock Sniper, and you just don't, like, you get to pick your first one, obviously, and then after that you just finish them off. Um, but that was in it, and then my goodie bag, Gawood from Ravelry, was the person that killed me. But I'm not too mad at her, because she also sent me The Secret Language of Knitters, which is great. It's like a um, dictionary. Got It has like, let's see, G, this way, G, and then under that it says garter stitch and gauge, and it t defines what it is. It's really cute. And the chocolate that she sent is gone. I didn't have a single bite. My family attacked it. And um, a bookmark says knit love not everybody gets it see the little guy standing over to the side like boring and then on the back it has the different um like yarn guide kind of thing and a little tape measure and some soak and a lolo bar woohoo so I had lots of fun and I can't believe how close it came. There are three people left. I just mailed off the weapon was my bullet and now it's um, the next girl's weapon. <laughs> and um, hopefully it'll, should, it's going to be really close and there's three left and good luck if you're still in it. Um, as far as it's uh, sister competition I guess you'd call it the tour de sock was going on and I just couldn't keep up I tried really hard this is the first um, pattern it started October 1st and I think October 10th is when you had to have it finished by and I obviously don't but it's a really pretty pattern I don't know how well you can see it because of the variegation and again I don't know what it's called because I'm a hot mess today um, I really would love to have been able to go further in there, and I'm going to keep all of the patterns and set my own little tour de sock, but um, I've had a lot of fun, and um, I cannot tell you how amazing the knitting community has been for me through this stressful part of my life, and I really appreciate it. Um, speaking of knitting community, I've been a knitter for over a year now. 
I started knitting uh, mid-October, so it's been a little over a year, and I knit um, a whole bunch of scarves. And then the next thing that I knit was this poncho. And it's all garter stitch, little bobbles. I remember going into the store and the I think the lady was a little annoyed at me because I didn't know how to make the bobble. Um, the store is very nice. This lady was not like every time I go in there, she's just not very friendly. So anyway, <laughs> she taught me how to do the bobbles really quick, and then I came home and I watched YouTube a lot. Here's my little problem. When I did my poncho, I did not weave in the ends very well. Some of them came unraveled. It is, I don't know how well you can see this, but it's a mess. Like, look at this. Tied a knot, tied a bow. <laughs> it's a mess. So what I did was I, um, just last week, I crocheted a collar on. So I pretty much, I couldn't I couldn't fix the ends. They're they're just a mess. It's it's a mess. So I um, folded it in a little bit, and then I crocheted an edge all across, which was really fun, by the way. Um, my crochet skills could use some work, but I had a lot of fun making this collar. My question to you is what can I do about this mess? Like, I was hoping that the collar would kind of act as a binding, and I'm just not sure it will. I'm, I'm, I would have liked to get rid of the section, here's the outside, the section, oh, I'm not doing very well, from, okay, this is the poncho, the outside, and this is the inside that I folded over, and I would like to get rid of it. It's not the same length. It's a mess. Um, and I don't know how. I thought about cutting it and then using like fray check on every single edge. But that seems like a lot of work. But maybe, did any of y'all know how I could uh, rectify the situation? Because from the outside, for the most part, as I say that I find a, a big lump. But for the most part, it looks pretty good. And I think I could wear it, but um, it needs some help, otherwise it's going to fall apart. So, uh, what else do I have? I am working on my Tina skirt cow. So if any of you are still working on your skirt cow that I started a long time ago, uh, here's what I have done. I actually ran out of yarn. I have more, I just haven't gotten the next ball, but... It's my little skirt. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine rows or repeats of the little butterfly. There you go, and it's super soft, and I love it. And um, I don't remember the yarn. It was discontinued yarn, which is why I got it half off. And it's really fun and easy, but not boring. It's not all total stockinette, so that's fun. And I am working on a pair of toe-up socks. I'm almost finished. I'm not going to make them much longer. This is um, Hobby Lobby's uh, Walk Away Sock Yarn, which is the same brand of sock yarn that I use to make my lovely Roro socks. And I think I'm going to have, okay, here's the story of these socks. These are the Cinderella socks because I started them for Josh and I didn't use a pattern. I just kind of guessed as how big to make them. And uh, they were too small for Josh, so I was going to make them for me. And I was like, don't worry, there's plenty of yarn in the ball. I mean, making them two at a time and I have two of these so that's um 437 yards 
of stock in it. Like, I, I have enough to make more than one pair of socks. So, anyway, I said, don't worry, I have enough to make more than one pair. I'll make you a pair out of them, too. And then, um, as I went along, I was like, I don't know if these are big enough for me. So I had Connor try them on. And I was like, okay, well, I'll make them for Connor. I mean, the color, you can make them for boys or girls. Black and gray. And uh, yesterday, after I turned the heel, I was like, uh, Kira, come here, let me try this on your foot. <laughs> so my Cinderella socks are actually started off for Josh's feet and are now on my six-year-old daughter's feet. And they're going to be perfect. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But I'm glad I have so many different size feet to pick from. <laughs> um, and... That's basic. Like, I have been working on mainly the socks and the skirt until I ran out of yarn and was too lazy to go get the next ball. <laughs> um, last weekend was Fiber in the Burrow, Murfreesboro, which I know the Knit Girls talked about. Um, and I saw Leslie from the Knit Girls, but I was uh, far away from her. And I took a picture of her. So, hi, Leslie. I have you on my phone. <laughs> but I never got to see you up close. I, I, honestly, I didn't see much besides yarn and fiber and animals. Like, I didn't look at any of the other people. <laughs> but if you saw my, saw two girls um, hanging out at Murfreesboro on the little gate, there are two girls and a, two boys, Mrs. Loaf from Plurk. Um, and I went together and we took our two kids, so, um, that was us, and I had so much fun, and I didn't buy too much, um, but I bought, this is hand-painted, 100% wool from Blue Goose Glen. I thought that would make pretty socks, because everything makes pretty socks. Well, it'll probably have to be for Kira, because it's 325 yards. And then, I don't know what this is called. I can't remember. Like, yarn caddy? Maybe that's it. Yarn caddy. Um, it's from Purdy Things. And Cheryl McLean is the woman that was there selling them, but her husband makes this. This is out of maple. And you stick, I don't have a ball of yarn around here to stick on there. Let's, if this were, let's pretend that this is um, in a ball and you stick it on here and then you stick it back in your bag and it um, then feed it out of the bag so that you don't get hair like dog hair at my house, dog hair everywhere. Um, so it keeps it clean and it keeps it um, kind of like a yarn bowl, only a yarn caddy. And what I thought was really cool was um, fiber. She took fiber and wrapped it around and did the same thing when she was using her drop spindle, which is what I plan on doing with mine. Um, this was $30 and they had all different kinds of, like this is maple. I don't remember. I don't know what kind of wood stuff is made out of, but dark wood and light wood. <laughs> I got dark and they sold light, but um, it was really cool. And I haven't actually had a chance to use it yet, but I love the idea. And um, my next project that I'm going to start is dun, 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 it's called the Sagrantino Shawl by Lauren Dana. Gian Ferry. I'm sorry if I can't say your name right, but isn't that beautiful? It takes about 874 yards, and I have picked out this yarn. This is, um, Arrow, I can't say it. I'm just going to hold it up to you and let you say it yourself. But it's hand dyed in chili. And it is 70% superwash wool, 15% silk, 15% bamboo. 
And this is 430 yards, and I got two skeins. And believe it or not, I bought this at Tuesday morning for $5.99. And I am planning on, I, I don't know, this is an experiment. I don't know if I can do it. I'll figure it out. I can do it. I can do anything, right? Um, you see how there's little, like, ladders? I'm going to try to put beads on them. Now, when I made those beaded necklaces, I strung all the beads on at once. And I don't know if uh, I would do that. I got one of those... Look, my bra strap is showing because I'm a dirty girl. <laughs> um, I got one of those... Um, little tiny tiny crochet hooks and I also have the little needle threader so I think both ways like if you pre-thread it and then pull it up that's the only way I know how to do it um, but the crochet hook I think you can just put them on one at a time and I know lots of people have done it I just haven't researched it yet um, but I think I have my beads in here I do these are the beads I'm going to use they're uh, yellow and gold and pearl. It's called um, Sunshine. So I think that'll be pretty. And here's to give you an idea. Like you work each. It calls for DPNs, but I'm using Magic Loop, of course. And uh, you make each hexagon. And then pick up stitches and make another hexagon. And it ends up looking like here's the shawl. Like this that's the first one you make and then you make that one like pick up stitches from one and then attach it to I don't know I haven't looked into it yet but it looks kind of hard and I'm kind of excited about it so um, yeah that's my next project and I uh, have my tools ready I just haven't made the ball yet and I haven't ever um these are both two these are both hand dyed yarn and I've never used more than one skein like that sounds so silly doesn't it like I've never used more than one hand dyed skein you know, and I know you're supposed to um like knit with one and then switch to the other and then knit with the other and I'm not sure I haven't looked into that again like how I just jump into things and then I'm like hmm how do I do this <laughs> like my shawl like hmm I did this far now what do I do but that's how I learn that's what I'll do um yeah that's only that's that's my life in a nutshell sorry I um I'm all over the place and I don't have a um, set schedule I just kind of talked so hope it wasn't too crazy for you um, thank you so much for stopping by I really enjoy being able to podcast to y'all and I love um, hearing about you and hearing from you um, hi Stacy Knits nice to meet you at the uh, Fiber in the Burrow uh, you mean a lot to me and I hope that my absence this past couple of months hasn't made you think that anything less because you really are very special to me and I appreciate hearing from you and meeting you and um, letting me ramble on to you. So thanks a lot and hopefully I will talk to you soon.